Welcome to Paranormal Gumbo with your hosts, Angel and Aaron. <laughs> to another haunting episode of Paranormal Gumbo. This is your host Angel and Aaron hasn't shown up yet. I don't know what exactly is going on with him. Uh, he should have been here by now so hopefully he'll be here any minute. But I can't wait any longer for him. We have to go ahead and get started so we'll talk about a few things and hopefully he'll go ahead and show up pretty soon. So first of all I want to thank those of you who have responded to us with your paranormal stories and who have emailed us with your feedback. I really appreciate that. Please guys if you have any feedback for us at all or if you have any paranormal stories that you'd like to share just send us an email at paranormalgumbo at gmail.com or you can hop on our website at www.paranormalgumbo.com and you can fill out a contact us form and put whatever you'd like to in there we'd like your feedback good or bad we would like your ghost stories or your alien stories or whatever you have if you will send us your stories you can read them on air if you'd like or we can read them with your name or we can read them and and keep it anonymous if you don't want anybody to know about it so we do have some really good stories coming up so let's look at paranormal news There are a few things happening in the paranormal world right now. Most, uh, the biggest thing really is the whole alien thing continues to unfold. We now have Tom DeLonge's UFO organization. They say that they've found exotic metals that aren't known to the earth, that aren't known to science. So they're actually studying these metals right now to find out if they're extraterrestrial in origin. They don't say where they got the metals from. Steve Justice, the COO of To The Stars Academy and the former head of the Advanced Systems in, at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works said, the structure and composition of these materials are not known from any known existing military or commercial application. So that's from a guy at Lockheed Martin or, or formally at Lockheed Martin. I think he should know. So that's kind of exciting really. Uh, and they're actually right now working to even reverse engineer the metal. So hopefully we'll know something about that pretty soon. It's, it's so cool how everything's starting to unfold with the whole alien issue. You know, we have governments that are starting to talk a little bit. We have, you know, our people are starting to talk a little bit more. So hopefully we'll know a lot more of the secrets or the truths that are really out there pretty soon. But here's a little funny for you. I found this and <laughs> I couldn't believe that uh, that people have actually done it, but there is now alien abduction insurance. It's from a company in Florida, St. Lawrence Agency. They, over 6,000 people have signed up for this alien abduction insurance. So what you do is you pay $24.95 one time and the company mails you a certificate and if you're abducted by aliens they will pay you a dollar a year over 10 to 20 million year period. So hey guys honestly I can think of a whole lot better cause to spend $24.95 on. That just boggled my mind that people actually pay this $24.95 for this silly certificate. You can just make yourself one up online and print it out if you want. Another crazy thing that's going on in the paranormal community right now is the whole storm whatever, storm place X thing apparently is going to be a fad because now they're wanting to storm Loch Ness in Scotland. There's 
a, a petition online to do that on September the 21st, the day after Storm Area 51. So, hey, all you guys who stormed Area 51 on the 20th, you got to hop over to Scotland really quick. I don't even know if you can get to Scotland that quick from the United States. I, I'm not sure on that. But over 40,000 people have signed up, which we'll see hopefully uh, at least that would probably be a better outcome than this whole storm area 51 thing you know it's not a military organization so have fun with that guys but then again i'm i'm asking you not to storm area 51 although i have not been able to convince certain other people who may co-host this show that it wouldn't be a good idea so aaron may or may not be storming area 51 along with you guys who who go he kind of just wants to go and check it out and see what happens so we'll see trying to convince him not to do that so he's still not here i'm not sure what's going on with that but We'll give him a few more minutes, and then if he doesn't show up, we'll give him a call. Let's talk a little bit, though, about Area 51. That's what our show's on today. So, you know, we, we've already covered aliens recently, and we kind of didn't want to cover the whole alien thing this soon again. We really need to, to broaden our horizons, but with the whole Storm Area 51 movement, we really felt that we needed to get some more information out there about Area 51 and, and the bigger picture with that. So let's just look a little bit at the Area 51 history. It's kind of cool. It actually was built in 1940. And I had no idea that before it was used as a government facility for the military, it was actually used for an animal sanctuary. But the U.S. Government War Department restricted it from public access in 1942. And then it began its long journey into what we now know as Area 51. It's located in Lincoln County, Southern Nevada, and it's part of Edwards Air Force Base. So it's actually, it's in another state, Edwards Air Force Base is in California, but it is a part of that Air Force Base. So that's kind of interesting. Its official name by the government is the Nevada Test and Training Range at Groom Lake. And Groom Lake, it's not an actual water lake, but it is a salt lake. So, you know, this is out in the middle of the desert. So that's what they mean when they say Groom Lake. Other names for Area 51 are Homey Airport, Groom Lake, Paradise Ranch, and Dreamland. And the reason Paradise Ranch is on there is at one point in the 50s, I believe it was, the military was trying to get civilians to come out and work on the site. And they kind of, they started painting this picture of this ideal place. And they started calling it Paradise Ranch to attract more civilians to come work on the site. We don't really think of civilians working over there on the site, but they actually do. They live in different places around Area 51 and they actually bus in every Monday. They're bused in to the facility and that most of them stay there until they go home Friday and then it all starts again Monday so that's actually kind of cool they can't reveal anything as far as what goes on in Area 51 and I'm sure most of them aren't really privy to the more top secret type of things that may go on there so it's been used uh, in recent years for a lot of things it's been used as an aerial gunnery it's been used for bombing nuclear tests it's been used as a proving ground, a flight test area, an aircraft control and warning area. It's been used for blue flag exercises, green flag exercises, and red flag exercises. And those actually, they're realistic type exercises that have to do with bringing people in from other military facilities as well and pretty much simulating real combat real combat environment so it's basically to give training in as realistic as possible of a scenario as as they can get and the whole thing it's really not that big it's 4,531 square miles which is a large area but it's not as big as we sometimes think of it as so we've been getting ufo reports since in the area since about 1955 and 
coincidentally, the first UFO reports that we got were about the same time that we were testing what's called the U-2 CIA planes. And the U-2 CIA planes were actually uh, invented to fly higher than any other planes out there at the time. Most planes only went up to 20,000 feet. Uh, military planes would go up to 40,000 feet, but the U-2 would go up to 60,000 feet. And the purpose of that was to go into fly over the Soviet area and spy on them without being detected, which it was a very successful endeavor. There were some that I know were detected and, and at least one I think that were, was shot down, but for the most part it was a very successful campaign. And they, because people were seeing this this aircraft that was going up to 60,000 feet, even pilots had no idea what it was unless they were privy to the whole project, which most, of course, weren't. So they started reporting UFOs in the area. And the government, although they knew what was going on with the, the U-2 spy plane, they couldn't let the public know that, of course, because that was top secret information. So they actually formed Project Blue Book to handle these reports. They actually formed a whole branch of the government to investigate these reports when they knew what was causing the report. And it wasn't until the 70s or so that rumors of aliens being kept at Area 51 actually began. A lot of people thought that the wreckage from Roswell was taken to Area 51 and that there were aliens kept at Roswell, I'm sorry, there were aliens kept at Area 51 from Roswell and uh, who knows the reality of that, but um, that is that is a huge part of the rumor that goes around out there. So it's actually interesting because the military denied its existence until 2013 and the only reason that they came forward is because Dr. Jeffrey T. Richardson filed a Freedom of, Inter a Freedom of Information Act regarding the U-2 Lockheed. He wanted to know more about it and in the report that was that actually came out to tell the story of the the YouTube Lockheed they had to talk about Area 51 so they finally admitted yes Area 51 was a government facility they didn't really tell a whole lot about it other than it it, it was used for uh, testing aircraft but uh, you know nothing was mentioned about aliens or anything like that but they did talk about it being used in training exercises. It is surrounded by security. There are men in white pickup trucks that surround the facility. You can't always see them, but a lot of times you can see them and they're armed with M16s and they're told to use deadly force if necessary. Usually what'll happen is if you go up there and they, uh, they stop you, they'll call the police. You'll be issued a 16, I'm sorry, a $600 ticket and taken into custody or, or told to leave the facility facility. So they don't generally just resort to deadly force, but they will if necessary. And they definitely will be geared up to do that on September 20th. Okay, so now it's time for our spooky listener stories. We've got a spooky listener story now from Louise, and Louise is in the UK. She is one of our avid Paranormal Gumbo listeners, and hey Louise, it's, uh, I really appreciate you sending us this story. It was really interesting and very creepy, so I think our listeners will really enjoy it. Here we go. I've never written down my experiences before. I've tried not to waffle, but this is rather lengthy. I'm sorry. If you decide to include my experiences in your show, please do refer to me as Louise, but mentioning I'm from the UK would be fine. Thank you. Of course, if you can't or don't want to use it, I won't be offended at all. I've recently discovered that I'm an empath, which might go some way to explaining why I've experienced what I have. My own opinion is that being an empath isn't a gift, more that my brain is just wired that way. Many experiences in my life have forced me to make sure that I never doubt my intuition. I'm almost 40 now and I've experienced some fairly inexplicable things for as long as I can remember. I'd like to be clear from the off that I'm not the sort of person to immediately jump to the supernatural. I always question what I've seen, heard, or felt for a logical explanation first. 
There just isn't always a logical explanation, and my recount of my experiences are all ones I haven't been able to explain. As a child, I grew up in a close and fairly large family. It was well known within my family that my nan, my mother's mom, had a gift. She knew things but couldn't explain how she knew. My most memorable experience was the day I proudly took my very first car to show her at 18 years old. When she answered the door and looked at my pride and joy, she turned white. She started to shake very slightly and apologizing said she couldn't go near the car and that it was a death trap. I was heartbroken but went on my way. About two years later, I part exchanged the car at a garage. A couple of days after, I got a phone call from the garage asking me if I knew the car was, in fact, two cars illegally fitted together. Of course, I had no idea, and I was told that if I'd been in a serious accident, the car wouldn't, wouldn't have provided me or my occupants any safety. Me and my nan were always close, and she always said how alike we were. I believe my experiences and empathic side are perhaps a sensitivity passed down from her. The house I grew up in was built in the early 1950s and didn't have any particularly interesting story as far as I know, although the previous occupant had passed away in the house. There were lots of occasions when I'd be in my bedroom upstairs and hear my mom calling me from somewhere downstairs, but when, when I went to find out what she wanted, I'd find that she wasn't even in the house. My mom would often hear either me or my young brother calling her, but when she came to find out what we wanted, she'd realize we weren't where the voice had come from. This happened so many times over the years while growing up that it became a standing joke. My brother also heard what he thought was our mom with the same outcome. She wasn't in the house. We also had items go missing for a couple of days and turn up in very obvious place. We'd all look many times. If it was something one of us particularly needed, we'd demand out loud that the item be returned. For a long time, I thought it was my brother doing what little brothers do, playing us up. But I chatted with him about our experience as kids a few months ago, and he would definitely have owned up to it if it was him. Instead, he told me he often saw shadows passing his doorway in the middle of the night after he'd, we'd all gone to bed. That was something I'd never told my parents or my brother because I'd assumed, or perhaps hoped, it was the, my tired eyes playing tricks on me, but I saw the same thing many times. I got so scared some nights that I would visualize a knight in armor standing guard outside my door to protect me. Life continued to tick along, along with the occasional voices and things going missing but turning up again later. I eventually moved out of my parents, got married, and had my first daughter. After my marriage failed, I briefly moved back in with my parents with my young daughter, and then a year later I finally got my own flat, moved in with my daughter, and life was relatively quiet for a little over a year. Then I moved into a bungalow in a quiet cul-de-sac and things changed right from the first night we lived there. At this point, my daughter was about six years old. My daughter's bedroom was right next to the front door. Next to her room was my bedroom. In between and on the opposite side of the corridor was the bathroom. And at the end of the corridor opposite the front door was the lounge. It was about 2 a.m. by the time me and my now husband finally got into bed after unpacking my stuff and helpful family had left. We'd closed all the doors, as is my habit to do, but I heard my daughter walk past my bedroom door, and knowing she'd experienced some sleepwalking in the past, getting up out of bed, I told my then partner I'd go check on her and got her back to bed. I opened the bedroom door expecting to see her standing there, but the corridor was empty. I went to her bedroom, but the door was still closed, and at the time she slept in a high sleeper, a bunk bed style bed, but with a desk underneath rather than the bed. And when I went up the ladders to check on her, she was fast asleep. When I got back to my room, I asked my then partner what he'd heard. He immediately said he'd heard my daughter walk past our bedroom door, and he looked at me confused. He was more confused when I told him she was fast asleep in our bed because we both knew in the time it took me to get to the door, there was no way she could have made it back into the bed without me seeing or hearing her. That was the first experience in that bungalow. After about a month of living there, I began to make a point of making sure I was either in bed asleep or had the telly on as loud as I could without waking my daughter by the time it got to 2 a.m. That was the time the noises started. 
It was always knocks and taps. The only way I could sleep after 2 a.m. was to tell myself it was the floorboards or pipes, but I knew there were no boards or pipes I'd ever heard before. The usual things going missing then turning up in obvious places continued, but after two years the bungalow next door became available for rent and it was a much nicer place, so I decided to move us and hopefully leave behind whatever was in the first bungalow. The final night I spent in that first bungalow will stay with me forever. The experience was over in no more than a few seconds, but I lay rigid and terrified for ages afterwards. As my then partner and I laid down to go to sleep, I heard a low bump above in the loft and to the far left. Then another came, then another quicker and louder. It sounded like something heavy-footed first walked a couple of steps, then ran heavily and stopped directly above me. I froze. My partner said not to worry, it was just a squirrel or something. I focused on what he'd said because I knew we had a long day ahead the next day and needed to sleep. However, I knew there were no animals capable of making the sound we heard in the loft, and there were no items to make the noise either. The day after that happened, I asked my partner what he really thought of the noise in the loft. He said in all honesty he couldn't explain it, but he knew he, I wouldn't fall asleep if he'd, said that the night, if he'd said that the night before. Before my now husband had stayed with me in the bungalow, he was an atheist. Now he's not so sure. The second bungalow was much nicer and homely compared to the first, and apart from the usual things being moved around, I rarely experienced anything. However, I did have a constant uneasy feeling of being watched. I never felt alone. It was the kind of feeling you get when you're walking down the street and you feel like something is off. Then you notice someone walking up behind you and you decide to switch sides of the street. That bungalow was quiet. Quiet until the day we left. After a couple of years, we finally had enough money to buy our own home, so we bought a newly built house on a nearby estate. On the moving day, I had returned to the second bungalow late that night, and I was in a back room which was designed like a laundry and had the frosted window of the bathroom back onto it. I had to pick up some last minute bits before settling in for the evening. To this day, I don't know what came over me or why, but out of nowhere, I froze in fear. I stood staring at the dark frosted window at the ba of the bathroom and my gut screamed over and over, get the hell out now. I knew to get out I had to go past the bathroom. I summoned every bit of courage I could and bolted out of the bungalow as fast as I could, almost crying by the time I got outside to my car. I didn't see or hear anything, but trial and error over the years has taught me never to doubt my gut. Everything was quiet for some time in our new family house, nothing being moved around and no one calling my name. Seven months after moving in, I became pregnant with my second daughter. The pregnancy and birth were straightforward, and when my youngest was six months old, we moved her into her own room and cut and watched over her using an infrared camera monitor. I began to notice what some paranormal investigators call orbs on the monitor. I am well aware that the vast majority of light orbs or IR cameras are either insects or dust, so I didn't immediately find it interesting. I would often watch my youngest over the monitor just after putting her down, and I noticed that as she lay there, orbs would slowly move towards her, then move off in another direction. Some would fly in quickly, slow when they got to her, then fly out in the opposite direction quickly. Some were tiny, some were larger. I paid more attention to the orbs on the days I did the housework to see if I was kicking up dust, but there didn't seem to be a link. Occasionally, my youngest would appear to interact with an orb. She would seem to watch it as it flew over her or cry out if a large one flew at her. I appreciate this sounds a lot like bugs, but I became a little obsessed for a short time and I would check her room for natural explanations each day and evening before she went to bed without finding any bugs. One night, after an orb had appeared to upset my youngest and being a bit fed up with it all, I walked into her room and demanded that whatever was there to stop upsetting my daughter, and I made it clear that whoever it was would be allowed to remain on the condition that they do not interact with my daughter. Although they do still appear to visit her, she hasn't been bothered by them since. 
Both me and my now husband have been convinced that we heard the other walk past the bathroom door at night while we've individually been in there only to find the other in bed and not having left the room. Our house doesn't have traditional floorboards but big boards instead so that doesn't explain the sound of hearing someone walking past the bathroom door. My husband has heard and witnessed enough over the 12 years that I've known him that it was him who suggested that I might be haunted rather than where I've lived because I've moved around a fair bit and our new home and the land it's on don't appear to have any history that would suggest a haunting, yet I've not gone long without experiencing something. Since having my youngest and what I'd seen on her monitor, I started to do a lot more thinking about my experiences over the years and started to wonder if perhaps something or someone has been with me all along. Over the past year, I've often heard something moving around in my bedroom at night, and no, no pets are allowed in our bedroom overnight. I've heard items, including my lamp, move on my bedside table, but more worryingly, within the last year, I've begun to hear breathing coming from the opposite end of the room. One night, about three or four months ago, I froze for a moment as I felt the duvet tighten over my left foot and the mattress sink next to that foot as if someone had sat down on the end of the bed. I'd often wondered what that would feel like when I've seen it on shows. I never ever want to experience that ever again. After this, I decided to try to open myself up to hearing whoever was trying to get my attention. I focused on dropping my defenses and kept repeating in my head, I'm ready to listen. Nothing happened for a few days, but one night I was repeating the words and I heard a man's voice say, it's me. I was startled and desperately tried to figure out if I'd recognize the voice, but I didn't. A few days later, I tried again, and this time I regretted it. I heard another male voice, which sounded somehow younger than the first, say very aggressively, I'll F them all. I immediately backtracked and told the voice I no longer gave them permission to speak to me, and since then I haven't heard the voices, and almost every night I repeat to myself as I'm nodding off. Only love and light may remain, while visualizing myself surrounded in white light. I hear sounds like someone walking around my youngest bedroom during the daytime, even though I know no one's upstairs. Things still get moved around the house, and I see the dark shapes of someone or something pretty much on a weekly basis, but for the most part, I'm not scared. I have considered learning how to reach out to whoever is, is there, but I refuse to use a Ouija board. I think I'm a little shut off and cautious because of the last voice I heard. I can't explain why, but I feel like I have someone who has been with me all my life, but that there are also others who sort of drop by for some reason I don't yet understand. So thank you again, Louise. That is definitely a creepy story. A lot of stuff going on there for you. So Aaron is still not here, though, and... We're, we're into the show a pretty good way, so I'm, I'm starting to get a little concerned about him. Let's switch over. I'm going to Skype him real quick and see if I can get a hold of him. So let me see if I can get a hold of him, and then we'll, we'll go on with the show. We do have a really cool interview that Aaron did coming up. It, he interviewed a man who's been in the Air Force for years. He has been actually inside Area 51, which is really cool. He can't give us any major secrets, unfortunately, but he can tell us a little bit that maybe we didn't know before. He can give us his point of view with the knowledge that he has and should be kind of interesting. And since Aaron was there doing the interview and I wasn't there, it's probably going to be pretty funny, too. So let's go ahead and check on Aaron. <laughs> Angel, hey, what's up? How you doing? Where are you? You're supposed to be here. We're we're doing the podcast. Is, is that today? Well, oh, Dan, I thought we were doing the the remote podcast from Area 41. Yeah, we got the Aaron. family all in the car. We've been driving for about 14 hours now, and uh, we're almost there. Hopefully, the pizza's worth it. You're joking, right? No. I mean, you... look look behind me. Oh my gosh. I've got him on Skype here, and the kids are in the car. He is not lying. Aaron, you were supposed to be here in studio. How in the world did you get so confused on that? Well, I thought we were doing the remote Area 41 podcast, so I figured Area I would get a jump Area 41? Yeah. What is Area 41? 
That's the pizza place in Birmingham, Alabama. Right? Okay, Is that what's being got, created? We've got a couple of problems. Ta-da! First of all, they're not storing Area 51 until August, uh, September the 20th. Second of all, it's not Area 41, it's Area 51. Well, I was wondering why they were going after a freaking pizza place. Jeez, I was hoping for a pull up, got emerging traffic. The mountains here are horrible. Um, but yeah, damn. Well, let me turn around. I'll be, I'll be back in about 14 hours. I mean, I can stay on the phone with you. Um, well, at least, the baby pick, at least pick some good pizza for us. Well, yeah, you know I will. And no, I will. And you know, but, you can still watch out for aliens because you never know. Well, you know, I'm a little bit closer to uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, so. So do you guys mind? I am talking on the podcast. <laughs> I will turn this car around and head. Wait a minute. I'm doing that anyways. So I hear you doing your dad, your whole dad spiel. <laughs> Yeah. That sounds like yeah, my yeah. dad when I was in the car driving to other places other than Area 41. <sighs> well, it's uh, some brain fart that I had apparently. I looked it up, saw it was a pizza place, and I'm a fat dude, so I got excited. You didn't even think about it, did you? You're like, pizza? Hey, I'm no. going, and I'm going early. It's like, hey, we're going now, or else all the good pizza is going to be gone. Are you going to Naruto run into the pizza joint? Well, I'm going to try to do it. You might pass that. You know, like I said, I'm a fat dude. So if I lean forward too much with my arms outstretched, I'm going to be, my balance is going to be all, all messed up. So. Would you please get your significant other, I don't know if she wants her name on the podcast, but get her to take a picture when you face plant. Over there, I'm sorry, I'm eating some straw. Okay, so um, we want some of whatever Aaron's had because he is obviously in a whole other uh, state of being right now. I guess we'll let oh, you yeah. get on to Area the 41 then. Is that all potato? Oh, I'm sorry, Angel, were you talking to me? No, I was I was just sitting here talking to myself as usual. You uh, know how I am. Uh, well, uh, like I said, it's going to take me about fourteen hours to get back. Um, can you you think you can cover this one without me? I, I mean, I I think we've got an interview with an Air Force guy today, right? Yes. Ta-da! Yes, I think I'll I'll handle it one way or the other, but um, I don't know. You know, nobody can. Nobody's like you, so. Hmm. I'll do well, the best I'm there in can. spirit. I'm, I'm there in spirit, so. <laughs> okay. Maybe you, can do, maybe you can channel me. I don't know. I All am right. one of a kind, though. Do you want to introduce this interview for us? <laughs> well, we've got, a, we've got a friend of mine. I'm not going to release his name. He's with the Air Force. He's in the Air Force. We call him Grip Sinners. He, um, he was kind enough to talk to us. He's been to um, Groom Lake in Area 51. And uh, we, we talk a little bit about everything from Area 51 to Wright Patterson Air Force Base to what we think may be on the other side of the moon. We cover uh, a few topics on everything. So uh, hopefully the listeners can um, gain some knowledge from, uh, from what old Grip Sanders has to, uh, to offer us. So the fact that he is Air Force and you're still you're still around in the community somewhere on the way to Area 41 and you're not in Area 51 in a cell tells us maybe you're not an alien then because surely if you were you know the alien we think you are he would have put you in a cell. I don't know. We we'll have figure, a bit of we'll figure something out. So you said uh, you said September 20th, right? For yeah, Area 51. September 20th. So you have to get back on the road uh, for September 20th. So I hope you're ready for another road trip. Well, shit, I might just go there and hang out in the desert for a couple of weeks. I wonder I if you're the first one there. There's probably already people there. 
I'm pretty sure. Hey, look, I heard that the, the meeting spot for the Area 51 Naruto runners is right next door to a hotel slash brothel. So that's a little yeah. bit weird to me. Maybe maybe the guy that organized this thing is trying to drum up business. Could be. You know, the guy did come forward who said he started the whole event, and he's a college student. I don't know if he really did or what. But uh, supposedly he started it, and he's a college student, and he wants to make, like, this big yearly event, like Burning Man, out of it, like we talked about uh, before. I think we might have mentioned that in another podcast. Yeah, and group centers, and I even talk about that a little bit. Maybe maybe this will become a yearly thing, and all the nerds can uh, go to the brothel. And, wait, what? Um, go to the hotels outside of... Groom Lake and yeah. hang out and socialize. Yeah, because what? Aaron yep. would never go to a place like that. So we're going to just leave no. it at that. No. Right. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, I guess let's go to the interview. Okay. I'll see you in about 14 hours, Angel. All right. Bring me back some pizza and hopefully, you know, watch out for those aliens. Bring us back on those two. Gotcha. All right. We'll do. All I'll right. talk to you in a little bit. Bye. So how you been, buddy? You're on vacation. I didn't know that. I thought uh, you were doing some training. I am on vacation, yes. But I am. I was here for training. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at the local military installation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we We're did not going to say their names. We don't have to. We can, but we don't have to. Yeah, I, um, mean. Yeah, no, I was here for training. We have uh, one of our systems that we use to actually, funny enough, track movements and uh, information about people. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, for deployed locations and nice, things like nice. that. It's one of our systems that we use. Um even if I did tell you what the name is, I forgot what the meant. Yeah, it happens. But, it happens. You know. Even if you did tell me the name, I would forget it like eight seconds later. You'd forget it. Uh, the internet and the entire universe would go, oh, let's write this down. Even though it's out there on the internet, it's not I'm like it's go ahead hidden. And look this shit up real quick. Oh, my God. That's what that, <laughs> that's what that guy does? Oh, Ta-da! snap. I know exactly who this is. Track people. We keep mm-hmm. track of their records. But basically the w- way I like to refer to it as we're professional creepers. Nice, nice. You so spy we, on people. We we know things. We know more things about people than they seem to know about themselves. Oh, it seems. Nice. They forget. So you're, the, you're like Facebook. We we kind of are. We have we have like the information about everybody. You're from like, Facebook and Google, then, right? A yeah. little bit, yeah. Like I can pull you up and just like, oh, there's your birthday. Here's your where oh, you yeah, lived yeah. everywhere, and here's you, you peed you went to bed as a child. Here's your psychological record. I did went to bed as a kid. You did went to bed. Yeah, I, mean, totally. I think we all did. Yeah. We did. Well, I went to bed until I was like thirty. You may want to see a doctor about that. Damn it! Mm-hmm. You're not the only person to tell me that. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I finished the training. Here for a couple extra days, just hanging out. But yeah, hey, this is uh, this is Aaron with Paranormal Gumbo. All of my listeners know me. Wait, um, your name is Aaron. I've yeah. been calling you A. A. Ron for like five years now. Well, or you know, Aaron everyone Ron. calls me A. A. Ron once they get to know me. I'll be honest, I don't know an Aaron that I haven't called A. A. Ron. Just like yeah, I mean, you know, Keen Pill kind of ruined that name for everyone. It kind of did. They, Jack Quellen. Well, they've ruined a lot of names just with their. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. You probably everybody has seen their football names. Yes, typically. I love it. Mm-hmm. Torque construction noises. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you keep hearing this, you know my beard is itchy today. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say every time I oh. just had to grow out the facial hair, you know, I go and get little small patches, but I have to always shave the beard hair. I yeah. can't do it, but. I'm it's not. like that with some people. You can't get the majestic beard that I've got. It should be like the guys in Slayer. Just have it grow all the way out and just start uh, like braiding, braiding it. Or yeah, that's what like I was that. about to do. I was about to start braiding it. Trying to go, Maybe I'll go one braid. Maybe I'll go two. I don't know. Mm. Like something it. crazy. Something like weird. Do some Viking type nonsense. Exactly. Yeah. Are Vikings bald? I'm pretty sure they had bald Vikings. I well, mean, you know, Vikings traditionally were like manly men full of testosterone, and, and that, that's what causes baldness. Mm, yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's what causes baldness. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, I keep hearing a buzzing. Maybe someone's uh, been watching my Facebook, and they know what we're going to be talking about today, so they're hacking into it, because it sounds almost like Morse code. It, you know, th- they probably know I'm here. I'm sure they do. I'm going to have to be escorted out here in a black van. Thankfully, we have one. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, well at least you do. 
Yeah, it's going to... Well, the, the windows aren't tinted completely, but <sighs> you know what we're here to talk about. What are we the here to talk about? The Area 51 Naruto run. What? Naruto. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What? Area 51? That's yeah. that's crazy talk. Yeah. You, 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 Groom Lake, I guess I should call it, right? Uh, yeah, Camp Groom Lake or something like that. Nellis Air Force Base. Uh, Nellis Air Force Base is near there, if I'm correct. It's not actually at Nellis Air Force Base. It it's is just kind of close. It, uh, they're relatively near. It's in the same state. Okay. Let's just say that. Well, yeah. you know, one of the things I was going to ask you is um, I did do a little bit of research online, and maybe you can clarify something. That's but scary. Um, Nellis Air Force Base is in the same state, close by, but Groom Lake Area 51 is run by... Edwards Air Force Base, which is 230 miles away in California. Can that you, is correct. Can they, you explain why well, that is? Well, for one, they are actually both testing facilities. Um, as you probably know, we have several different programs that we have. Uh, you know, we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we develop the SR-71 Blackbird, the U-2, yeah, the U-2 Dragon yeah. Lady, the, and, you the know, Stealth Bomber, the was F-117 Stealth Bomber, which I had the opportunity to to help name, but they did not take my submission. What they, was your submission? If I remember correctly, we ha- I think we have a plane called the ghost or something like a mm-hmm. fan no we have the phantom i believe and i was going to call the f-117 the, uh, the super ghost mm-hmm. i believe kind of a little bit of a callback to you know like the old bentley's and things you yeah know, they got the bent or i'm sorry not the bentley the rolls royce yeah I yeah apologize. but yeah they apparently did not like my submission so they went it with, with, with whatever the hell it is we went with was it that oh, oh yeah well. if you haven't figured out i am air force for those who oh, yeah, yeah, probably yeah, put the yeah. clues together. Edwards like Air Force Base. We're talking about Edwards. Edwards Air Force Base. Okay, sure. So, yeah, they are testing, developing, you know, facility, Edwards. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there are aircraft, like the U-2 and the SR-71, that mm-hmm. we don't want to have the public see as such. So they kind of send those aircraft to a remote testing facility. and, and we A.K.A. Area 51. A.K.A. what we now know as Area 51. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just just like probably several other units in uh, military installations across the Air Force or even probably uh, the entire military, we have what we call geographically separated units, okay. GSUs. Basically, it's just a unit or many units at one location that is serviced by another base entirely. Gotcha, so gotcha. We got okay. Edwards Air Force Base is the servicing base for Area 51. Okay. So that's why you'll probably see those names uh, probably come up together versus Nellis Air Force Base, which is in a probably much more closer relation to it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I always thought. You know, it's like, why, why is it, you know, not run by this base that's a little bit closer? But it makes a little bit of sense, I guess. Kind of. But not really. Not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess really. the one way you could look at it is California being the way California is. The Air Force can't really do all the fun stuff it wants to in California. So they're like, all right, okay, let's, yeah. go, well, let's go to Nevada, Nevada and shoot some big shit off Yeah, Nevada there. does everything. I mean, that's where they used to test nuclear weapons. They did, yeah. I they, mean, I, I was reading some stuff up on the, the Naruto run. You know, they've still got the craters and everything. I would I mean, love to see those. Uh, I mean, if you want to see a big, giant, like hundreds of feet wide crater that's probably like you know mm-hmm. all glassed over and shit then yeah, yeah go ahead i mean i've seen good luck with the nuclear Arizona. radiation that may still be there but you know yeah. i'm not gonna worry about that yeah. i'm pretty sure there's still islands off the you know bikini atoll and you know like hawaii and all them places that mm-hmm. are probably a little bit more irradiated than nevada but good maybe luck. Do, do you hear the theory that bikini bottom on spongebob is actually the bikini atoll where they used to test the weapons that's actually a pretty neat uh little thing you got going on mm-hmm. there yeah it's, it's not my theory it's just one that i read but i'm like this is amazing that is a pretty fantastic thing to probably think about like where does spongebob come from because there is a lot of mm-hmm. well, let's just say silliness in that kind of cartoon. That wildlife that shouldn't be talking moving around the way they are you know, oh, no, we're, we're gonna, gonna ignore that we're gonna just assume that the nuclear there? radiation got there but like how did mm. she get how did she get down there in the first place and when did we start launching squirrels it's not in space she's at the bottom of the ocean i know but that's the thing she's got an astronaut suit on how did she acquire that to begin with you've got to have something to keep the compression against you away from you i mean the yeah but we were gonna send her in space well maybe they sent her up and she just something landed. happened and she just landed right down there and they just couldn't find her little little itty bitty capsule yeah so she just sunk to the bottom maybe that was it maybe she was like kind of because she did kind of come in after the show technically mm-hmm. already began maybe she was just a, a space program that we lost and sunk to the bottom you know if i remember correctly they don't really have her origin story she just kind of popped up one day so uh, so for our listeners that are 
are planning on going to Area 51 for the run, Good what, luck with what, that. what can they expect? Death. Really? Themselves. Now, I'll be honest. Obviously, the, uh, the facility, while it is going to be protected, you're not going to just all of a sudden get, you know, get shot up and stuff. Well, There's I mean, the, the, of... the last time I looked at it, they had 1.5 million people that were planning on going. I can see yeah. them arresting, you know, hey, we've got 40 people here that are trying to infiltrate the base. They're going to arrest all of those. But what do they do for 1.5 million people? Now, I know 1.5 million people are not going to show up, but what happens no. if, let's say, 80,000 show up? There should be a fair amount of, you're right, there should be a fair amount of uh, no shows. activity. No. Well, no shows or activity, yeah, because they even have been talking about the local areas, the hotels, the campground sites mm-hmm. have been getting full. So if really? you haven't already made your booking to go to Area 51, you may not be able to. There, uh, I believe the local county sheriffs in the state of Nevada may have actually said, hey, we are preparing non-lethal rounds, you know, tear mm-hmm. gas and things such as that. Rubber to, bullets. Yeah, pre- they're preparing for the oncoming storm, as people would probably like to call it, and they are prepared to probably help mitigates what losses that may happen in case they do actually decide to, you know, rush and narrow to run. Uh, <laughs> That's what I want to say. I just want to see that happen. <laughs> just a you know, million people just narrow to yeah, running across the field. that would be freaking hilarious. This, what I want to see is, because I've seen, you know, the quote-unquote plans that they've had come up, and, you know, got all oh, the Kyles go here, yeah. and they pop the... Ma- the Osmer. Steves, the Karens, yeah. the one guy from Russia... I don't think they realize how far of a distance their maps are, like that they're drawing on. Yeah. I want to see a bunch of dudes who are narrow to running like a mile across the desert at yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever it is. Like, I want to see that because they're not going to make it just because they're tired. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I, I, I believe they've got um, all the secret stuff going on are the, the top secret space, or not spacecraft, but aircraft mm-hmm. landing in Groom Lake. is They've got a massive runway um, because they've got these, these things that are traveling at such high rates of speed that they've got to land and they've got to have plenty of time to stop. I would say it's probably not the fact that we have high rates of speed, but it's probably just because we have newer aircraft that we don't know what their capabilities mm-hmm. are. Because we've had fully loaded, massive C-17s, which mm-hmm. are are really big yeah, yeah. Um, take off on extremely short run yeah they've got to modify the wings and get the thrusters I mean we on. have I and mean, we have jet takeoff we can put on those things if we absolutely have to so the, the fact that we have a longer runway is probably not to because we have high speeds because mm-hmm. I mean any one of our fighter aircraft can take off like on a dime yeah they don't they don't need to really get up and go for very long okay I think it's just because we we want it to make sure we have enough space to test newer aircraft and things that we in case something maybe goes wrong you know you're not crashing into a metropolitan area well we'll see what happens when 1.5 million people show up to now to run an air force base (laughs) yeah i know a guy who says he's going to go and i extremely badly want to go with him when he does i don't want to run because i'm a fat dude i can't run for shit no, I just right. want to go see the shit show that happens. And there's probably going to be a lot of people who just like, I just want to go to see what happens. And they're mm-hmm. all going to show up at three in the morning or whatever time. And they're all just going to look at each other and go, but are you going to do it? Yeah. Who, who's going to be the first one to run? That's Florida man. Yeah. Florida man. Florida man. Just Florida hand him, man. hand him a, a 40 and, and you will. Yeah. Just, hey, you, there's candy bars over there. Now they, they've got a lot of celebrities that are saying they're going to go and, you we know, have ex presidents and vice presidents mm-hmm. who say we still got the codes to area 51 yeah, which, and you, know what? I, uh, you know what my thing if i were going to run mm-hmm. i would find chuck norris who says he's going yeah and keanu reeves who says he's going exactly. i would like you guys just get right here ah, see you don't want to let the big guns go first they're not the vanguard they're the generals and the captains sitting in the back you know calling the shot he is actually also prior air force and he was prior air force as a cop or a security forces member so mm-hmm. he so yeah 1.5 million show up so what let's see so what could possibly happen maybe they break down the barriers that you know the police have set up mm-hmm. and they start making their way across the deserts towards you know whatever possible death doom and destruction that the United States military has for you, which, by the way, these are people who are highly trained, really very well trained, um, probably extremely bored too. Oh my God, I am so glad this is happening because the people at Ed or at uh, Area Fifty One are finally got something to do with them. So yeah, probably like jumping up and down, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, like, oh my God, oh my God, all right, boys, today's the day. Get yeah. your real bullets out today. We're gonna have <laughs> some fun, and they're just gonna. Go, Woo! 
Oh, and it's like we've been training our whole life for this shit. We it's really have. Least. I saw a post where they're like, every branch of the military has their one battle, and for the Air Force, that's going to be our one battle. You the know, Battle got, of Area 51. Yeah, we got D-Day for like the Army, we got you know uh, Iwo Jima, mm. and you know places like that. No, for us, the Air Force is going to be the Battle of Area 51. It's going to be amazing. May or may not also be in uh, you know Nevada, somewhere around the Ooh. 20th of September. Oh, I know this is probably going to date this uh, this podcast just a teeny, itty little bit a bit, but for all of those who found out yesterday that they did make Tech Sergeant, congratulations to all of you. Congratulations on the promotion, guys. Yeah, so they'll probably be super happy uh, partying with their family, which thank you, family members, because they are a huge support to everything that we do. But for those who did not make it, uh, you know, don't get too hard on yourself. Okay, yeah, so we've talked a little bit about, um, about what might happen if 1.5 million or even just 80,000 people show up at Which, Groom Lake. If they do break down some sort of barrier and get mm-hmm. through to like relatively close to the Air Force base or the testing and training facilities, I'm mm-hmm, going to call mm-hmm. it, more than likely we're probably not going to initially go out there and just start waylaying our bullets on everybody because yeah, no, we really no. don't have the need for that we probably are going to try to set up some sort of you know non-lethal defense system well, you know, when, when i was in law enforcement that. they had a claymore type thing that shot taser wires out and i was like yeah, that's that, amazing we so, could probably use a few of those we've got just thing that has the the hard rubber bullets about this size you know you remember yeah. they had the claymore mine that had those in it mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure you get a couple of kyles that get hit with that or some kids that are kind of doughy like me get hit by this and they're like See, the noise. doughy kids are probably like getting hitting by, you know, like getting hit by this kind of thing because this is still nice and soft. Oh, You're that's not gonna... nice and soft, but the bullets are oh, the, the hard rubber. <clears throat> bullets. The hard rubber yeah. bullets. There's gonna be people like me who are not as doughy who are gonna like really feel that. Well, yeah, that's why you get behind the fat guys. Look, okay, oh. guys. I'm not going to you be You got to send running. the fat guys in first. Exactly. There you They're go. They're the clearing wave. They're going to take all they're, of the punishment. They're the minesweepers. Exactly. They're going to take all the punishment. Then you send the skinnies like you. You send the... Well, I mean, I, I guess you could send the skinnies in, have them uh, miss with all their bullets because, mm-hmm. you know, Martin they're too run. damn small. And then you send in the Kyles and the waves of the Florida man and the, the heavily awesome Got a bob and weave. Well, you know, bob and weave can work, especially if it's dark. I will say being dark out does significantly hinder... Your ability to aim down sight. As from experience, I've known, like, shooting iron sights, at least, is yeah. extremely difficult. Well, yeah, yeah. But I they're mean, probably going to set up lights and things, I would assume. Well, I'm pretty sure. And I've, I've seen the full color night vision. Those things are amazing. But I can only imagine what that would be <laughs> like with a muzzle flash. Have full co- you think we can afford that kind of shit. You're funny. Well, here's my theory okay. about this. Okay. I've I've been trying to track down the the person that's been organizing this the the person that's Who got set up the, the Facebook page kind exactly of yeah because I would like to do a real brief interview with them and I've been able to find no one you probably won't be quite <laughs> so okay eighty thousand Kyles Karens Weebs and one Florida man mm. make it to Area Fifty One if if if. 40,000 of those make it onto the base, into yeah. the buildings. What can they expect? I know you can't say, you know, what's inside the buildings. There may be some things that I may not know or, you know, I may not be able to talk about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I that's say, perfectly you know, fine. We're not going to we're not going to pressure you. So for let's that. so let's not so much. I mean, we could speculate all day on what is possibly oh, yeah. in there. Let's speculate on what could happen after we, like, get them out of there. Obviously, we could probably possibly find some sort of technology that Mm -hmm. is advanced. And I know a lot of people have been like, oh, this is my new hover bike that I'm flying around the city with, which which would be fantastic. That would be amazing. Um, But so what happens if we get the alien out of there and all of a sudden he calls back to his home world? Oh, now we got an invasion. And now we have a possible uh, possible hostile invasion. Okay, 40,000 Kyles, Karens, one Florida man. And I think they said one kid from Germany Maybe. make it into. They're going to see some stuff they don't understand, which is probably going to be some they're gonna parts. S- they're going to see some sadness, is what they're not going to understand. Is why is the military so sad and so yeah. bored out of their minds? Yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> I, I did like one of the um, one of the games they've got now is you know hey Aaron stormed Area Fifty One yeah and I got arrested um, because I brought tequila to do shots with the alien I know that was my brother he did he brought tequila to do shots with the alien he got arrested and he's hung over now I love it that's crazy stuff crazy. maybe the gray aliens that everyone claims to see is actually what's out there and the military and the U S government are 
all the governments are, are conditioning just, us right. to what they look like. So that we kind of get assumed. Now, see, I will say this. Why, why would the aliens have come here? Because I did think about this. It's like, what are aliens doing coming to this planet or even this solar system? Well, you know, like, maybe you maybe they're just traveling and their spaceship broke down. Because obviously that's, you know, uh, you know, we're the AAA of the mm -hmm. universe and, you know, we need to help them. But yeah, we I, are I had a few other, or at least one other idea off the top of my head. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind hearing yeah, what's that? my story. Go so we have a solar system with mm -hmm. several planets in it. Nine. Some of which. Yes, I'm counting Pluto. We're not gonna. We're not gonna have that discussion. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! The the Air Force guy is telling me there may be more. No, no, no. Well, what do they know? We're, we're gonna stick with the nine that we are, are claiming to have now, including Pluto. Um, but we have several planets, some of which are formed into rock mm -hmm. and. You know, some of them are gas. Dust. Some of them are gas. Now, the reason they're gas, for those who don't know, is because they didn't have enough mass to actually have the gravity uh, gravity contract themselves into a hard rock circular form. Mm -hmm. So, what I was thinking: what if the aliens are just here because they're building new worlds? Ooh, so maybe like they're like coming, like, "Hey, we got, we see you got a couple gas planets. We have, you know, some technologies that we want to, you know, turn this into a good, you know." off-world planet for us maybe like mm -hmm. a travel system and you know like we were just the closest you know civilization nearby so they're like hey let's just you know see what's going on yeah let's just pop in say hey how you doing and then all of a sudden now they're in a freaking bunker in area 51 now they're captured and we don't know what's going on if go for you guys. There, yeah yeah i like that you know that's a it's a very good theory it's kind they're, of like they're you know, alien the Hitchhiker's Guide to the galaxy yeah i mean you know if there is a universe out there that we already know about for those who don't believe in certain things or mm -hmm. do believe in other things uh the universe is big and there's probably a lot of other things out there so i would very assume big. they have a multi-galaxy type yeah, i like that that's a that's a very interesting theory i like that and maybe they are just here to develop more planets into something habitable for them hmm, entirely possible like or at least like maybe it. have us share wealth or something i don't know i don't know mm -hmm. it's always something you, know, you gotta think about having other or, uh, extraterrestrial life out there and like what are they really doing yep yep so but, forty thousand karen's kyle's kevin's one florida man a kid from germany and one stoner dude just the one well okay let's, we let's break it down just a little bit okay we've got twenty thousand karen's kyle's carl's kevin's well the florida man is still there because florida men are resilient the kid they, from germany they can't die so you know and yep. kid, well, kid from germany i'm actually surprised about because the way the germans look at things they're like they just follow the rule if you tell them to do something because it's the law they just don't do it they well, don't maybe that's why it's a kid he's he's not He's in that mindset yet, yeah. yet. Yeah. I thought they he, he makes it here, but like he gets captured. Yeah, he, he gets captured. They, so just, we, just send him back and like that. we'll let yeah. you off with a warning because yeah, we know just better. go home. Just go home, kid. Just, you didn't see go. shit. So they, they make it past the initial building. They make it in, and they're like, oh, crap. You know, the hovercraft aren't here. What's, what's going to happen now? Like, what happens if there's nothing there? Yeah, because, I mean, they're giving well. these people, they're, they're giving the United States military a two-month you know, window, two month. They really did kind of not really yeah. plan for us to see Facebook. Yeah. Which is kind of kind of weird. The entire internet, to be quite fair, because it's not just Facebook. You can just go and find Area 51 memes now all over the gosh darn place. So, like, what what if we move everything is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Because you guys have two months to move everything. Which we do. Which we could. Or could not. You know, who yeah, knows? I mean, Maybe we're being watched. If there's nothing there, I mean, what, what are they going to move? Yeah, here's my thought. Here's my thought. There's nothing at Area 51 at any time, but it's in like Podunk, Kansas, because no one's expecting it to be there. Yeah. Or maybe even some other military base. There are other military installations, now that you brought it up, that have the capability to house certain things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily aliens or technology, but maybe even just information about this stuff. Yeah, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing with me. I wouldn't go to Area 51. I would go to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. There you go. Yeah, Wright Patterson. Yeah, well, uh, you know the Wrights and the Pattersons uh, airfields. Okay, yeah, in yeah, Ohio. Were, were they in charge of like uh, Project Blue Book, right? I believe they were. Yeah, the early fifties. They uh, called it that. They had a few other projects mm -hmm. as well before that. They only lasted a few years, but I think the early fifties they started Project Blue Book and. Yeah. Uh, 
because, you know, people have been seeing these mm -hmm. strange flying objects. And yeah, they're they like, got holy a lot shit, of, we need to I, know what this is. I think they did get a number of how many uh, sighted reportings they have actually mm -hmm. gotten over time. But, yeah, plot, Project Blue Book was meant to investigate all of those sightings and, you know, if they were real and maybe if there is some sort of alien yeah. technology or information out there. That's what it was for. The crazy thing about Blue Book, wasn't it terminated just after they went to the moon? You know, I think it did. Yeah, well, I think it was around 1969, 1970, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. they. Uh, so why, why do you think that would happen that. if they if they're investigating this and they go to the moon and then they're like, okay, well, we can stop now. Do you think maybe it's because they found something that says, hey, extraterrestrials are real, or something that says, hey, no, they're not? Well, that's the question now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I mean, if we've gone to the moon, let's, okay, let's hypothetical this. If we go to the moon and mm -hmm. find out that there's nothing actually there, yeah. would we keep looking for stuff and be like, maybe there's just not in the moon, maybe mm -hmm. the, like we just haven't looked far enough yeah, or we, in the right I, spots? My thought on this was... Yes, we're looking at our closest celestial neighbor, the moon. Right. Oh, there's nothing there. Well, let's look further out. Right. I mean, the moon, granted, it did have a uh, celestial life at some point because mm -hmm. it did collide with the Earth, and mm -hmm. that's kind of how it came to. Well, that's the modern theory is that it that's collided. That's the theory, yeah. And a lot of even life that we have here on this planet is something that the moon brought to us so mm -hmm. while we probably didn't find any proper aliens i would imagine if you know it'd still be a long shot to have found something up there so i would imagine just because we didn't find something on the moon doesn't mean we would stop look so or maybe we found something or we did find something and we're like holy shit you know we don't need to investigate ufos anymore because now we know exactly what they are or and we just don't want them knowing that we're investigating them anymore because maybe, maybe we have their technology mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. don't want them to know well yeah, you've got to look at all of the technological advances that we've had since the moon landing and we have grown mm -hmm. by leaps and bounds in the technological aspect right so maybe we're reverse engineering some alien technology maybe we have that's true. That's entirely possible. I mean, we do have a lot of wireless technology nowadays that, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have before. There is a lot of advancements we have made uh, over the last hundred years, but I think we generally as a whole don't really think of the first half of the century as all that much advancement, but the second half of the, the century half is has amazing. gotten a little bit uh, more silly, yeah, I will I mean, say. You know, we, we keep looking at our phones, you know, even if it's just for the time, but I, I love the fact that there there was more computing power in our phones than they had in all of the computers for the actual, the actual moon, moon landing. landing. Right, yeah. and I've also you can even kind of see it like what was what what has been developed over the past you know like forty fifty years before before that time frame you know we were all the you know we were the golden era and people you know generally worked hard and a lot of things happened a lot of hard work. Nowadays we're kind of more taking care of ourselves, making things e easier for ourselves. It kind of seems like a different direction that our even technology has gone into yeah. is as far as advancement and we there's so many things that we have nowadays that makes just life easier for us yeah. that can, we didn't really think of before can you imagine going back a hundred years even to let's say 1919 what would you bring back just to blow their minds all of it no just you can bring one thing i mean heck you. just having the cell phone in in there mm. in my hand would probably like what 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 is this like, yeah, what is this i would go back to 1986 87 when my teacher said you're not going to carry a calculator with you everywhere and be like look look what right? i got now you, yeah huh? just like 20 30 years ago there are some things nowadays i mean heck we always talk about how star trek came up with mm -hmm. you know this communication devices type thing back you know way before the yeah, time and I mean, now it's you, like you look hey, at the old ones they had ipads pretty much they're like hey look at this and they've got the ipad right so it maybe maybe a lot of those shows had influence from people who have mm -hmm. seen technology that they weren't supposed to see or be let known about that's a, that's a very interesting thought right there i love it yeah some good stuff so it's, yeah we're, we're rating the wrong base guys that's what i'm trying to get at we're rating the wrong base we need to possible. leave groom lake alone we need to go to wright patterson and see what they know <laughs> i know it's not as sexy as nevada because yeah. you got las yeah. vegas and reno but it, yeah, it's no nevada yeah no no columbus yeah columbus hey yeah, there you go the uh rock and roll hall of fame oh yeah that that's, is there. I yeah. would like this. Okay, let's that. all meet at okay, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ohio. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We will carpool to Wright Patterson. All 50,000 of us. 
on the door politely and be like, hey, can we look at your stuff? And you know what? You want to know something funny? We're going about this all the wrong way. Everybody's trying to storm the military base and do this or do that. You know, you really just need one military escort. Mm, really? Well, not really. Not for like 100 million people, but yeah. one, one escort per maybe like, I don't know, a family-sized amount of people to so, get them on base. So, are, okay, what if we what if we went through all the proper channels? Do you think we could be like, hey, can we just take a tour of Groom Lake? A tour? Yeah. Oh, like an educational type exactly. thing? Exactly. Like, you know, we, we get one military guide, 200 yep. people. Or, or maybe we'll get 10 military guides, 200 people. We're yeah. like, hey, look, we just want to come and see what's up. You know, we there just want to walk around, a, take a look around. We don't well, have anyone in the buildings, of, really. There would definitely be a lot of logistics in, into mm-hmm. going into that. Because even myself, when I was deployed in Kuwait, there was something called the Mile of Death. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people probably don't know about that, but it's... I think Highway 88 or Highway 8, something like that, or both, actually. And it's a lot of uh, old, let's just say old military memorabilia out there. I'm just going to leave it at that just to Mm -hmm. censor myself and not, you know, say anything bad. Yeah, yeah. We had to coordinate with, like, OSI or, you know, like, our version of CSI kind of or CIA kind of guys. They're, uh, you know, special agents, and we had to coordinate Mm -hmm. with our cops, our security forces members. We had to yep, coordinate yep. with a few different people just to go and see some of this. So I can imagine while it can be done, yeah. it would definitely it would be, be a, something that... A headache it for would everyone be a involved. massive headache, yes, absolutely. But, but it can would, it be done? Th- theoretically, I would assume that there is a possibility that you get enough uh, military escorts and things of that. You could just walk up and just go mosey around. I mean, you'd probably be... As recorded by an armed guard the entire time. Yeah. But. Well, I know there are people that have tried to actually go to Area 51, and they, they do yeah. have security on the perimeter. Oh, they're, they're called the camo guys, and they're uh, civilian I, contractors. I think, I think we saw the same video. No, I, yeah, we do have civilian contractors to do certain mm-hmm. things, probably to help protect uh, certain things that the U.S. military itself is not supposed to be protecting, yeah. or maybe we'd be doing other things, because we have different functions generally. But, you know. And one of the things you that I love about this... You guy if you want to. Oh, am you I are te- a camo guy. Am I tech sergeant camo guy? I have seen you in your camo. Yeah, I, I love one of the things that they're doing on this... Let, let's go storm Area 51 is we're going to climb the gates. Or we're going to climb the fence. There's no fence, I've heard. You don't need one. Yeah, I mean, you've got miles and miles of desert around you for freaking crying out and loud. And even if there was a fence, which they probably are certain fenced in areas. And well, I'm sure, yeah. I don't think... You'd have to send in the group of the bigger people or even the skinny people just to kind of, like, lay down their bodies so you can climb over them. You well, I, I can see if they are actually organizing this event, you would have some of the bigger guys, like yeah. myself, you know, uh-huh. grip the fence. The smaller guys climb up on your shoulders and hop over. I mean, we got, but we got sea wire up there. Up well, there. that's why you bring a blanket, right? You just toss it over. I've seen sea wire completely immobilize a uh, like one of our trucks like what just straight up wow. just, like it wrapped itself around the axle the brakes just everything like one wheel got caught and it took the and entire just, line of seat you know, and completely it was done after madness that. after that like yeah. you it would take hours that of, would be a sight to see yeah but I, I can't imagine just a simple blanket would i mean maybe the first set of sea wire but usually they have layers yeah and they're all layered together and you're still gonna have to deal with some like i said some serious shit to get through all that oh, yeah yeah you're gonna be naked by the time you come out the other end. i mean as long as you're greased up like you know like i said a greasy pig or something like that and you're just running through they can't catch you you know we've got to have a name for florida man we just can't keep calling him florida man or can we no, we can. Okay. The, Your name he's, now he's is not Florida just one man. person, obviously. He is the idea of that I which like can it. happen. I like it. We could just take a slight detour right. up to Indianapolis. Yeah. Go to Wright Patterson Airfield, knock on the door. Hey, how are you guys probably doing? They're going to be real chill about everything because, you know, oh, they yeah. can't, just like, a, you know, a cop doing a raid on, you know, some guy's house, you can't let them, you can't be obvious and let them know that you have drugs in the back. No, yeah. you got to be real chill. Like, all right. Like, hey, guys. Come, yeah. come on yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. Like, hey, you know, we're going to have some drinks, have a few laughs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and chill. And, all right, get out. Yeah, next thing you know, you wake up four your days liver's later. liver's gone. Your liver, yeah, I was about to say your liver's gone. Yeah. Your spleen hurts. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's some, that's right. Well, see, that could just be our alcohol, too. Yeah, it might be. Might be. So good. Uh, and that and I mean, our uh, current healthcare system. Ooh, don't take uh, the whole liver. Just take half of it so the other half regrows. Maybe. 
Yeah. You could do some experience. Put uh, put uh, somebody else's uh, liver inside you. Maybe you could be one of our walking experiments. Ooh. Wait, did I let a secret? Wait, wait a Shit. minute. We, we, we've got that? What? What's going on? Huh? What? What's happening? I, I, I hear the drones. <sighs> They're coming for me. Yeah, there. We've got people knocking. Snipers are getting set up already. Yeah, Hold as here. soon as we walk out. It's I'm going to go happen. out through the back door. That's fine. I'm pretty sure they didn't just hear that. That's what I meant for them. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So, so Area 51, right? really nice. not mm. – this is what I think. It's not going to be a whole lot. Even even if 80,000 people show up and they do storm even the base. Even if 300 people show up, yeah. it's going to be interesting, yeah. definitely. It's, it's going to be a party. It's going to be like Burning Man for nerds. I was going to say it really is actually the uh, same time period, not necessarily the same place, but same time period as uh, I think it's Wasteland Weekend, which mm -hmm. is funny enough. Wasteland Weekend is outside of Edwards Air Force Base. Oh, that's in, amazing. Uh, in, in California. Yeah. yeah. So I would I was thinking it's just going to turn into something like that, like I said, Burning Man, Wasteland yeah. Weekend, but it's free. Maybe it'll happen every year. The the Area Fifty One Storm Party, yeah. that would actually be pretty dope. But here, here's my thing: okay, eighty thousand people show up, they do infiltrate the base, they do get inside the buildings, mm -hmm. they're going to see technology for airplanes that are being built. They're not going to know what they're looking at. They're, they're going to try to find all of these won't. aliens. Yeah, they're probably going to see, like, the There's new, not going to be anything. Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, like, ramjets that we're still building, you know, mm -hmm. still building and developing. And, yeah, they're probably they're probably going to see one of our, you know, normal aircraft and go, look, at an alien. No, it's yeah, not, bro. No. Like, out here. It's an aircraft. It's it's an airplane that we know all about that's, you know... You know what it is? They're trying to read You know what it is? What's it's that? the first time in everybody's life that they're going to look at something and they can't Google it. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, because, oh my God, you're not going to have Google out there. You I'm can't. pretty sure they've got horrible cell service. Not even well, the fact that it's, they probably you don't have, have Google service, service, but the fact that it's not on Google. Mm. You can't just Google, like... This thing that I'm looking yeah. at in front of me. Let me take a picture of this. Google's not going to know what, what it is. Google's yeah. going to be like, huh. You can't go to Facebook and say, hey, guys, I'm at Area 51 here. Can you uh, give me some recommendations mm -hmm. on uh, how to repair this real quick? And we're like, dude, yep. what is yep. that? I love it's it. And, you know, I'm not condoning this. I'm not saying that people are going to do this. Hopefully they don't. But if they do make it in a building, don't take anything, you freaking idiot. Already you were committing a treasonous act by oh, infiltrating this base. But can you imagine how bad it would be if you take something? Right, which oh my I mean, God. you're gonna. I mean, you're probably gonna not even gonna leave the building intact. I will be honest. Like, yeah, you're gonna probably get tackled in th by three different big dudes with like body armor. Been on, waiting their whole life for this. Who really have? Yeah, it's one of the guards. He's like, you know what? Good. We're so <laughs> damn bored. Let's do something to get some activity here. I'm trying to think back if there is anything else that we've done that is probably similar to that in recent history, and I can't really think of anything. But yeah, no. if it was. If it was one of our uh, one of our cops out there, he's a genius, and oh, yeah. he will be like lauded uh, by everybody. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a tech sergeant, like without even having to take the test. He's gonna he's gonna be just yeah, like here here are your chief stripes. Oh yeah, your chief master yeah. of the air force. Yeah. Congratulations, uh, two star admiral. Sure. Yeah. That's that's a navy I know, but completely different branch of service. Like, and they're just like you're everything. You are all of it. You're in charge of it all. You still do not rank George Washington, but you President are President Trump. Answers president. to you, right? You're yeah. president of the world now. <laughs> you are our alien liaison. That, that would be Trump's fantastic. Idea. Holy shit, that would be so friggin' hilarious. Which we say that like it hasn't been... Transformers did that kind mm -hmm. of shit. Because now we think about it, if we go back to Transformers, actually. Air Force was in that movie. Mm -hmm. The one, uh, let's just call him Tech Sergeant. He was a combat controller, mm -hmm. Tech Sergeant, and he all of a sudden the next movie is it was a Chief Master Sergeant. Yeah, like he got promoted got like promoted. three He's different like, times. There you go, buddy. Like how did this happen? Yeah, but because Transformers and aliens combat from controllers, those guys are badass. Man. They are CCT guys. They are. Yeah, they're dope. the first in, right? They are the pretty much the guys to mainly set up. Airfields in very, very mm -hmm. remote locations. Mm -hmm. They're built for combat, and uh, yeah, they do a lot of things. Hey guys, we need you to go up and set up an airfield outside of Rapid Patterson Air Force Base so that mm -hmm. we can start dropping bombs on all the Kyles. Here you go. Mm -hmm. This is what they're going to do. They got David Blaine, and like, make it disappear and reappear Ooh. somewhere else so they go a completely different area. <laughs> That'd be. What if we sent something in space and maybe we maybe that's when we found something is in 1969. That's why we stopped Project Blue Book. Oh. Maybe. Well, I know one of the first things that was sent into space specifically for uh, trying to contact an alien race was a speech by Hitler. So that's kind of scary right there. 
Well, now we're going to have to defend ourselves. Space Nazis. Where is the doctor and Torchwood and shit? Save us. There's actually a Cambridge uh, uh, professor who says that aliens are interbreeding with humans. Mm. So, I mean, I can can see that. Okay, well, we've talked about Area 51, um, Patterson. Everybody's minds will be wiped at the end of this recording. Yeah, I can. I I love it. The one meme, you know, you got a one point. Five million Kyle's Karens, one Florida man, you know, and they've got one dude with the the little mind eraser thing from Men from in Black. Men Black yeah. yeah, it's like I, I love it this time of year when they come and do it again, again. Yeah, what did it work? like what? Yeah, I saw one that was pretty funny. It's like a time traveler appears in front of you. You know what's what's relevant in the news these days? Well, we're about to storm Area Fifty One. <laughs> Still, ah, no, the Area Fifty One massacre was this year. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's question like, mark. Damn, Thank yeah, you. I love it. That's some good say. I will say, if if nothing, we did get some pretty dank memes out of this oh, yeah, entire yeah. endeavor. Some fantastic ones. I love them. I like it. Good old memes. But is there anything else you wanted to talk about? The United States government and the United States military has, I guess we'd call them contingency plans mm-hmm. for things. You know, like plans in case, you know, certain countries attack. Or Godzilla's real. I would Godzilla, like to know. Godzilla what, is real, by the way. I'd like to know what their plan would be if Godzilla, Godzilla. just pops up. I mean, we wouldn't nuke him because that clearly wouldn't work. It'd just make him stronger. No, it'd just be like new Hulk kind of thing. It's not Mm going to work. That would be interesting. I'm I'm curious to know what we have in store for people like Godzilla or like the zombie apocalypse. But, you know, I'm pretty sure one of the big reasons that we did stop, you know, investigating into paranormal activity is because... You know, we did find something, obviously, but because we also have now a plan on how to battle against such forces. Mm-hmm. So- All right, this looks like a good place to stop. If you want to hear the rest of this interview, tune back in to Paranormal Gumbo every Friday. So that's another episode of Paranormal Gumbo. We'd like to thank McNarb Gaming for allowing us the space to record, Never Ready Gamers for letting us use their equipment to record on, and Burnham Drugs in Goche, Mississippi as well for uh, providing us space and support. We would also like to thank Jerry Polly from Hillbilly Horror Stories. We've reached out to him for advice, and and uh, he has been so gracious in giving us tons of advice and continuing to provide an ear for us and, and feedback. So we really appreciate that. He does so much in the, the podcast community to help the uh, up-and-coming podcast so that's very much appreciated if you haven't checked them out you should check them out they're hillbilly horror stories and jerry polly hosts the the show with his wife tracy and they're spooky and hilarious at the same time so it's a really good show so until the next episode just remember don't burn the roof